guys! Welcome back to another Colorful Keto with Dory. Um, we're going to do a supper, a quick prepare supper for you tonight. I wanted to show you guys what I do in my house when we have soup or stew. Now, I'm the only person in my house that eats ketogenic. And that may or may not be the case at your house. You might have different dietary needs in your home. You might just have picky kids. So this is my best favorite option to deal with that. And we're going to go through what we do to make that. So we start our soup base and I boiled off two chicken carcasses. I figured you guys didn't really need to watch me pull the skin and, and uh, meat off of that. I'm just going to put it over here. Um, so that boiled all day long and that's going to be our basic soup base. Now, when I do my soup, the things that everyone is allowed to have and the things that everyone really enjoys, as well as the things that are lower carb, then those are the things that I will be adding into my base. So it's got the chicken stock, and then to that, I'm just gonna chop up some of this while we chit chat. Um, then to that, I'm going to add the garlic, because everyone can have the garlic, everyone likes the garlic in my house. I use leek as opposed to onion. Now, the reason why I do that is because I realized that leek is an awful lot lower in carbs, but has all of the flavor of onion. So I can put twice as much leek for the same amount of onion as I can get, giving me a lot more flavor in all of my soups and my stews. So I'm gonna use leek today. If you prefer onion, use onion. I, I wouldn't say don't use onion. You just need to limit the amount that you're going to, going to use just due to the amount of carbs in them. Now again, when you're making a whole big pot of soup for the whole family, not an awful lot of that portion will be what you're going to eat. So, chop up the leaf there. Now this is going to go into our main soup base. Now everybody has their own, you know, what everybody likes at their house. Um, someone doesn't like this, someone doesn't like that. So for me, everyone likes tomatoes. So our tomato goes into the base. Now these ones are frozen tomatoes. You can use canned, you can use fresh, you can use frozen. It doesn't really make a difference. I bought these by the case and then froze them. To do that, all you need to do is wash them Cut out the little cores, and then you want to pop them into boiling water until the skin peels off of them, and then you can just freeze them just like that. Now when I take them out frozen, I'll just chop them up, and I find they are easier to cut from frozen than if you try to thaw them, just because the tomatoes get kind of smushy, and um, they make it a little bit harder to chop up. So I cut up the tomatoes into some nice big chunks. I'll cut up the rest of them for you there. So I'm kind of curious um, what you guys eat at home. If um, if you're all keto families or if, you know, your family is like me where just one person eats and not everybody does. Maybe your family has different dietary restrictions, no gluten, no dairy, whatever that is. I'd love to hear it in the comments because I'm always looking to find quick and easy solutions to make it easier so that you're not making two separate meals. Because none of us have time in our day to make two separate meals for everybody in our house. Which is why this is my favorite way to go about soup. Because soup is one of those meals, oh, <laughs> soup is one of those meals that everybody eats in the house and not everybody likes the same things in. So I'm just gonna chop up a couple more of these tomatoes and then we're gonna call that it for tomatoes for now. A couple more coarse pieces of tomato there. Now the rest of these I'm just gonna throw back in the bag in the freezer because I don't need all of them today. So it is a nice, quick and easy way to be able to have prepared what you need on hand. Um, I never used to make anything from scratch. I honestly believed it was quicker and easier to, to buy the pre-made stuff. But since I've started doing it at home, 
what I realize is that it's not any more difficult and it doesn't take me any longer. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to add into the soup base is peppers. So again, everyone at my house likes the peppers and they're lower in carbs. So I add them to the base and they're going to give us some nice color. I've got a little orange pepper here and a little bit of yellow. So we're going to cut up just one half pepper of each. And again, you want to cut these just from, from frozen. Okay. So we're going to chop those up. Throw that into the base. Half of that pepper there. Okay, so we're going to chop that up. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow pepper real quick. And then we're going to move on to the pick your own options. When I season my soups, I use uh, usually um, crushed black pepper, uh, fresh ground black pepper, garlic salt, a little bit of Italian seasoning. Um, we have a really nice blend of Italian spices that we grew in our garden. So I usually will put that into my soups. So we're just going to add a couple of those things. Just a little basic seasoning. And you can put whatever you like in your soup base. Ooh. And I forgot, we're going to be making chicken skins with the soup. So as soon as we're done getting this base started, before I start the sides to go with, we are going to do some baked chicken skins. Okay. Myself a little Italian seasoning here, a little bit of oregano, throw some of that in there. Okay. And we'll put a little bit of garlic in there too. Okay, so get these in here and then we'll start the chicken skins. So the chicken skin I had left over from we have rotisserie chicken which is also what I boiled the soup stock from. And I find with rotisserie chicken, the skin comes off really, really nice. And I like to save it. It's absolutely delicious. And it's going to honestly be the star of your soup meal. Okay, so let's get this yellow pepper into there. Okay, so now our basic soup stock has our chicken broth, tomato, leek, garlic, and tomatoes. So we're gonna let that cook down and I'm gonna turn this up a little bit. And I'm gonna show you guys about how to make crispy chicken skins. So you're gonna need two pans to be able to do this. Over here where you can see it a little bit better. And you're going to want to layer your chicken skin inside of parchment paper. Okay. So, do, I'm going to put this just inside of here so that it will double. Okay. And we're just going to cut a little piece off the end so that it's the right size. You don't. Uh, you don't want it dangling out in the oven to get burnt, so you want it to fit really nice. Hey Jacob, sister's doing a movie. Okay, you want to go hang out in your room for me while sister's making a movie, please? Okay, so this is the peeled skin that I took off of the rotisserie chicken. So what we're going to do is we're going to spread those out in a nice thin layer on top of our parchment paper. So you want it to be just a single layer thick. And I picked up at Costco the last time I was there this really, really neat 
Frank's Red Hot Powder, which is just a dehydrated Frank's Red Hot sauce. So we're going to use that today on our chicken skin, and we're going to make crispy buffalo chicken skin. Okay. So I'm just going to spread those out. I'm curious, too, if you guys have tried the crispy chicken skin yet. If you want to drop me a comment whether you've tried them, if you haven't tried them, you think they look great, you think they don't, I'd like to be able to chat with you guys and know what you'd like to see, what you are interested in trying. Okay, so we've got our chicken skin all spread out there. I'm just going to quick wipe my hands and then we're going to season them. So this is the Frank's Red Hot powder that I got at Costco and I'm really super excited about it. And I'm just going to sprinkle on all the chicken skin kind of liberally. I haven't tried it with the Frank's Red Hot before so you guys get to be part of the experiment and and see if it's yummy. I do post results of all of my recipes on Instagram. You can find me on Instagram, same name as the YouTube channel, at Colorful Keto with Dory. So after you watch the video, if you want to see what the results look like, feel free to hit me up on Instagram. Okay, so we've got these all sprinkled. Now you're going to cover the second layer and use the second pan to hold it down nice and snug. And that just will help it from curling up as it cooks. And I'm going to pop this right into my convection oven at 350 until it's all crispy. So we're going to pop that in. And then we'll continue on with what goes on the side for our salads. Okay. So in my house, um, everybody loves carrots. But they are higher in carbs. I'm allowed to, you know, have a small amount if I want. But I don't often choose to eat them. So at my house, carrots are one of the things that we do as a pick your own side. So quick and easy, we're gonna pour our bowl of carrots and we're gonna add a little bit of filtered water in there. I'm gonna say about a tablespoon's worth, not much more than that. You don't want them to be soaking wet, but you just want them to steam nicely. So we're gonna cover the bowl with plastic wrap. And then we're just gonna pop a couple holes in it. And this one's gonna go in very quick. Okay, first side, done. So the ne next side that I like to make is zucchini. I love zucchini, not everyone in my house does. And also if you cook it directly into your soup, it gets quite mushy. So what I like to do is just save myself a piece of zucchini, I steam it up and add it into my soup. And sometimes the family picks the zucchini too. I'm often surprised by what they will pick on add your own soup night. So I'm just going to cut this into some not too small, fairly decent sized little chunks. I like them to be nice and chunky in my soup. Okay, so we're going to get a bowl for those. Cut up the rest of the zucchini here. And I will say, guys, <laughs> by no means am I a chef. Uh, I'm a home cook. I, I make things, you know, for my family. I, I don't have any sort of cooking training. I just, I love food. So don't be intimidated. You can try anything. And speaking of trying things, I have created a special hashtag just for you guys if you want to try any of my recipes and you want to post the results. So if you try one of my recipes and you want to post it on Instagram, please use the hashtag Colorful Keto Rockstar. And that's you guys. You guys are going to be my Colorful Keto Rockstars. So when you try my recipes and you love them and you want everyone to see how great they were, that's your hashtag. Okay, so now we've got our little bowl of zucchini. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to cover that one up, put a teeny little bit of water in it, and get it ready to go into the microwave. 
this is a quick, easy soup that I like to make whenever I don't feel like making supper, to be honest. It doesn't take me a lot of time to put the ingredients together. Everybody really enjoys it, and each person gets to choose what they want in their meal, and everybody walks away happy. Okay, so the next side dish we're going to add is cauliflower rice. That one is one of my favorites. It's what I use as opposed to a pasta or a rice in my soup. This is cauliflower rice that I froze. I picked them up in the heads, ground them up in my Ninja, and just froze it raw. So when you want to use it, I'm only going to use about half of the package, so I've broken it open there. When you want to use it, it is raw. So you want to make sure you cook it thoroughly. And the way you can tell when your cauliflower rice is done, as silly as it sounds, is it doesn't smell like cauliflower. As soon as it loses that really strong cauli smell, that's when you know that it's fully cooked. So I'm going to throw a little bit of that in there. I'm going to put the other half back in the freezer because I won't eat it today. But I think for tomorrow we're having loaded cauliflower casserole, my favorite. Okay, so we're going to swap out this bowl for the carrots. And our carrots are nicely steamed. Yeah. And then we're going to put the lid on, put the lid, put the plastic on the cauliflower rice. This one you won't need to add any water to because of the moisture of the frozen cauliflower. So with this one, I'm just going to put the plastic wrap on it and give it a little bend. Next time, that one will go in. Okay, we're going to give our soup stock a little stir. Okay, let's see how we're doing there. Okay, so I'm going to bring it over for you guys so you can see the really pretty colors in it. And I'm just going to tip you down nicely there so that you can see. Oh, I wish you had smell-o-vision because it smells delicious. Turn that up so it'll cook a little bit faster. Because we're using the frozen tomatoes and frozen peppers, we want to cook it a lot higher heat than we would if we were using a fresh vegetable. Okay. So we're just about done on that zucchini. I'm going to quick tidy some of this up. Okay, then let's take a peek at our chicken skin and see how that's doing. Move this over this side for us. I'm going to put on some water also. Because, like I mentioned to you, I am the only ketogenic eater in my house. So I do still make a carb alternative side for my family that I do not eat. That will either be a potato, a pasta, or a rice. So I think for today's soup, they will get a pasta option. peek at this here and see how it's doing. So you can see it's started to kind of cook a little bit. I'm going to turn it up just for the purposes of video. I'm hoping that they'll be ready by the time we're done doing our soup. Turn them up a minute. And we're going to swap out the zucchini for the cauliflower. Now with my options, because we're allowed the extra fat, sometimes I like to put um, some fresh butter on the vegetables that I'm going to be adding. What we're going to use today is fresh homemade butter that I made out of 35% whipping cream. And it's really easy to make it at home. You just start whipping your whipping cream and keep whipping until it's butter. 
I will do a video on that if you guys are interested. If you'd like to see a video about homemade butter, just drop butter in the comments. Or if you're interested in a dairy-free butter, drop dairy-free butter in the comments. I did make a really excellent dairy-free butter flavored spread for my sister recently. So I would be definitely willing to share that recipe or make a video of it if it's something you guys would be interested in. So if you'd like to see homemade butter or homemade dairy-free butter spread, just leave me a little comment that says butter or dairy-free butter and then we'll look at doing that video together. to mention to you guys I'm really excited that you've come to hang out with me my channel's really new and I'm hoping that we'll get a chance to chat a bit I'm hoping that once I increase to a hundred subscribers that we'll start going to a live format instead of a video so that we can chit chat you guys can share your ideas with me and let me know what you'd like to see recipes for solutions that you're hunting so I'm going to grab some pasta for them while those are finishing. So they might or might not like me, but today they're going to have spinach vermicelli because it is a little bit better for them than actual pasta. And again, this is an option that I, I don't eat the carb option, but I don't really feel it's fair to make my family live my choice. If they want to make healthier options, then I do allow them to make those choices on their own, then I feel like it's winning. Okay, so we're just about done here, guys. We've got our last side inside the microwave. serve this I just set it up like this everybody comes you've got your main pot with your soup you add your extras everybody sits down at the table I turned up that chicken skin hopefully it'll be ready in time for you guys to go look at and if not if it's not cooked by the time we're done the video I will have pictures up of it on Instagram at Colorful Keto with Dory on Instagram. Oh, speaking of Instagram, the other thing I wanted to share with you guys is I have started a specific hashtag to help you find my recipes and to remind you of my motto and my motto is don't miss it make it if there's something that you want something you're looking for a version that you need leave me a comment i'm more than willing to help you find the things that you want to eat and love to eat i don't want you to miss it i want to help you learn how to make it so when we hashtag our recipes we can add don't miss it make it and then we're going to let people know we don't miss the foods that we we want we make them we're creative and we love food okay so we've got the cauliflower side dish already and the family's pasta is almost done so i'm going to take a quick peek on those chicken skins and see if they're ready to show you Okay, so we're getting there, but we're not fully cooked. So I'm going to sign off this video, but I'm going to post picture results on Instagram for you at Colorful Keto with Dory. And again, thanks for joining me. I'm going to pick you guys up and bring you over here so that you can see when I set it up as a side dish what it looks like. 
and then I'm going to head out and have some supper with my family.